Mr Speaker, as you know, having sat throughout this entire debate, it has been a passionate debate characterised by many excellent speeches. I commend the members for Tiverton and Huntington, Bolton West, East Surrey, Mid Norfolk, Plymouth Moorview, Broxtow, Stirling, Dudley South, Faversham and Stoke and Trent South on my side for a series of outstanding speeches. Yeah. But it has also been the case as uh, the Shadow Secretary of State pointed out, that there have been many powerful speeches from the opposition benches as well. And I too, like him, want to pay particular tribute to the members for Warrington North, Gedling, Ilford North and Birmingham Hodge Hill for moving and passionate speeches. Their constituencies are lucky to have them as advocates for their uh, concerns and their needs. But perhaps the bravest and the finest speech that came from the opposition benches was given by the member for Barrow in Furness. It takes courage. It takes courage, and he has it, having been elected on a Labour mandate, representing working class people, to say that the leader of the party that you joined as a boy is not fit to be Prime Minister. He speaks for his He speaks for the country. And that takes me to, my, to the speech from the Shadow Secretary of State. He spoke well. He spoke well, but I felt he did not rise to the level of events. But one thing that was characteristic about his speech, he did not once mention in his speech the leader of the opposition or why he should be Prime Minister. lot of time for the honourable member. We have several things in common. He's lost weight recently. Sorry, I, we've both lost weight recently, I should say. Him much more so. We're both friends of Israel. Him much more so. And we both recognise that the member for Islington North is about the worst possible person to lead the Labour Party. Him much more so. And we also have investment in our national security. We meet the 2% target for investment in NATO, and we have two new aircraft carriers capable of projecting British force and influence across the world in defence of freedom and democracy. And in contrast, while we are standing up for national security, what about the right honourable gentleman, the member for Islington North? He wants to leave NATO. He wants to get rid of our nuclear deterrent. And recently in a speech he said, why do countries boast about the size of their armies? That is quite wrong. Why don't we emulate Costa Rica that has no army at all? No allies, no deterrent, no army, no way can this country ever allow that man to be our Prime Minister and in charge of our national security. But if he, if he can't support our fighting men and women, no. Who does he support? Who does he stand beside? Well, it was fascinating to discover that the right honourable gentleman, the leader of the opposition, was there when a wreath was laid. A wreath was laid to commemorate those who were involved in the massacre at the Munich Olympics of Israeli athletes. Now, he says he was present but not involved. Present but not involved sums him up when it comes to national security. When this House voted to bomb the fascists of ISIS after an inspirational speech by the member for Leeds Central, yeah. in which 66 people, including the, Shadow, sorry, including the Shadow Secretary of State, voted with this government in order to defeat fascism, I'm afraid that the Honourable Gentleman, the Leader of the Opposition, was not with us. In fighting fascism, he was present but not involved. And similarly, when this House voted to take the action necessary, when Vladimir Putin executed an act of terrorism on our soil, there were many Labour members, many good Labour members, who stood up to support what we were doing, but not the right honourable gentleman. When we were order, order, point of order, Daniel Reddy. Hey, it is a genuine point of order. And 
if the leader of the opposition won't stand up against Putin when he attacks people in this country, if he won't stand up against fascists when they are running riot in Syria, if he will not stand up for this country when the critical national security questions are being asked, how could we possibly expect him to stand up for us in European negotiations? Will he stand up for us against uh, Spain over Gibraltar? Will he stand up against the Commission in order to ensure in order to ensure that we get a good deal? Of course he won't, because he won't even stand up for his own members of Parliament. Why is it that a Labour member of Parliament needs armed protection at her own party conference? Why is it that nearly half of female Labour MPs wrote to the Leader of the Opposition to say that he was not standing up against the vilification and the abuse that they received online, which was being carried out in his name? If he cannot protect his own members of Parliament, if he cannot protect the proud traditions of the Labour Party, how can he possibly protect this country? We cannot have confidence in him to lead 